Well, when I got my hands on the new logic update with the new live loops, I wanted to learn the nuances of the live loops and there were gajillion of videos on YouTube. And don't get me wrong, I learned a lot from them, but I found myself having more doubts, which I didn't find the answers to. So I went on to learning by myself and what seems like an eternity and a new update later, I finally put up a complete beginner's guide to live loops in logic. After watching this video, you won't have to look anywhere else. So let's roll. To access live loops, you just have to toggle between these two sections, the tracks view and the live loops view. These boxes are called cells and think of these as the regions in the tracks view that we are used to. You then have a traditional top to bottom approach of adding channels, be it instruments or audio. On the top left, the small R button that you see is the record performance mode. So what this does is that it records your performance of triggering the loops as regions into the tracks area. Essentially, you can build a song with your live loop performance and then tweak it in the tracks view later. On the right, we have the quantize option and this defines the cell start time and ensures that all cells start in sync when you trigger them. So to start with, keep it at one bar because it's easier to trigger when you are counting the beats in your head. Next, we have the grid zoom button over here, which expands the cells. Now, next to this is something very interesting. This is a toggle button of all regions playback between tracks view and the live loops view. So this comes in handy in let's say you have drums, bass, pads and some lead loops in the grid, but you have a non-loop drone which you want to be playing in the background during your performance. You can just select that track and toggle the playback from the tracks view. This will mute the cell playback, but have the region playback continuously playing. So keep this in mind if you're performing and you see nothing happening while triggering the loop, first go and check the all track playback toggle button right here. Once you trigger any cells, the toggle playback then turns into a play stop button. On the bottom, you have the scene trigger button, which triggers all the cells in that scene or column. And finally, right on the bottom, you have the global stop button, which stops playback of all cells. When you trigger the cells, the cells playback is visually shown as this sweeping radar animation thingy. But what you don't realize is that the actual playhead also moves and keeps on moving for the entire duration, even when you stop the cell. And this can be really annoying when after an hour you realize your playhead has reached the end of the logic universe. So my pro tip, make a cycle loop of let's say four bars so that you have the playhead loop itself and you can catch hold of that playhead. Now that we know the layout of the grid view, let's look at the MIDI defaults, which is extremely important for loop recording and performance. Starting with the play mode, you have three options. Start stop, which toggles the playback when you trigger the cell. Momentary in which cells start playing and keeps playing till you have the cells pressed and stops once you release it. And re-trigger which re-triggers the cell playback every time you press it. Next you have the quantize start option and the cue loop start which defines when the cell should start at musically sensible places and in sync with other cells and the project BPM. You then have the reverse and speed options which you can tweak for the entire grid or a particular cell. Let me mention here that the MIDI defaults and the individual cell default parameters are the same. Next we have another drop down which defines the start position of the playback of each cell. So you have from the start, every time you trigger the cell. Stop position is when the cell will start playing from the point it stopped playing last. Sort of like a play pause. Playing cell position, when another cell is playing in the same row, the cell will start playing from the point it stopped and the playhead position in which the cell will play from where the playhead is positioned in the tracks view currently. Next, we have the field parameters in beats and bars. So you can change the start position of when the cell starts playback, the loop start, how long the loop should be and how long should the cell be. And this will come in handy when recording. With that, you then have the mute and loop button, which does what it says. If you just want a single sample playback, uncheck the loop playback 
most suitable for sample trigger and crashes while performing live. Next, you have the parameters for note velocity, dynamics between the notes, something like random velocity in piano roll, gate time is like the note length and global note transpose. Below that, you have the quantized parameters and I don't tweak much on this apart from the quantized notes. If I'm playing and recording through MIDI, it helps snap to the closest grid. Below that, we have the recording parameters, so which are takes, merge and replace, and then recording length, and then you can define what you want logic to do after you have stopped recording in the cell. So this one, this must knows about logic, took me some time to figure out if uh, let's say you are working and have triggered a loop in a cell and that for some reason you want to change some parameters on the MIDI defaults and you go ahead and do that. Don't expect it to be reflected on the other cells because what you changed was in the MIDI cell parameter, not the grid itself. Also, it's a bit confusing as the, all the parameters are the same in both MIDI defaults and empty MIDI set. So what you can do is that click on an empty space, basically deselecting any cell and then change the parameters to get reflected on every cell. You can identify looking at the heading. Logic will tell you if you are in the MIDI defaults or an empty MIDI cell. Same goes with the audio track. So keep that in mind because it helped me a lot in recording and performance, which we will look into next. So let's record our first loop. I'm using a simple drum rack with simple forward samples and now the MIDI defaults comes in handy. I will adjust the cell length to 4 bars. Set the recording to replace to have different takes. Put the recording length to the cell length and the recording end to play. Let's play a groove. Great, we now have a groove in place and now we need some chords, so let's record that. I feel this is fine for now, nice 4 bar chord progression. And now the bass. Perfecto. And now what you can do is pull up a lead line and just play live with your loops triggered. Something to keep in mind, you have to have the track as record armed for it to play through your MIDI controller. Now I have a Novation Launchpad Mini and I can do that with the record arm button like so. And I'll do a separate tutorial on how to use Launchpad Mini with Logic, so stay tuned for that. So the most important tip in this must knows is to have the MIDI default set to recording length as cell length. This will solve a lot of purpose when you are busy with recording something with both hands and it's sort of like logic taking care of your recording length for you. So you don't have to go back again and hit that stop record button which will offset the timing. And now that you have recorded your loops, it's time to perform by triggering the cells. Now I know a lot of you starting out won't have the launch pad but you don't have to worry about that. Logic Remote is sort of like a digital controller. Just pick up your iPhone or iPad and trigger the cells. You also have additional features like remix effects, so you can have a DJ-like controls in one single interface. 
So this is another project that I just made for this uh, tutorial. So I just made some random loops and let's trigger them and perform. As you can see, timing is everything and it's very important in these sort of live performances. And you have to trigger the cells at the right time. That's why keeping quantize start to one bar and triggering the cell on the third bar of the previous beat works best for me. And once you are done with the performance, you can stop all clips by clicking the stop global cells right here. So when performing, make sure your audio buffer size is set to maximum and all the tracks playback toggle is set to the cells view and not the tracks view. You can do that by going to the top right corner and toggling between these two arrows. Okay, okay guys, that about wraps it up for this video. I hope you found this guide helpful. I tried to cover most of the topics and made it as comprehensive as it can get. But if I missed out on any points, please drop it down in the comments down below so that everybody can benefit from it. As always, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you like what I do here and want to see much more videos like this, support the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Till then, cheers.